Wilson, a renowned author and poet. Good morning, Mr. Wilson. It's such an honor to have you here. How are you? Could you tell everybody I'm... a little bit about yourself and what you do? Prasari, a bit about yourself and what you do? Prasari. Yes. Okay. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for um, inviting me to interview. Um, yes, um, I'm Juliet Wilson, as you say. I'm um, based in Scotland. I was born in Manchester in the north of England. I moved to Scotland to study at the University of Edinburgh and I've been here ever since except I lived in Malawi for two years and taught um, sciences there. Um, I'm an adult education tutor, um, a conservation volunteer. I also do wildlife surveys and of course I write poetry and short stories. Um, so I think that's um, an introduction to me. Um, we're exceedingly curious about how writers and poets do what we, they, uh, they do, and we loved your poem, The Lost Dance of the Cranes, so we want to ask you a few questions about you and your work. That's great, thank you very much. I look forward to the questions. Our first question is, what inspired you to start writing? Um, well, I first started writing when I was very young. I think my first poem I wrote when I was about nine. And I was just inspired by, um, I think, largely inspired by nature. And um, I think that it's the beauty of nature. And then as I was growing older, the sort of realization that nature is under threat and wanting to highlight that, which isn't to say that nature is the only thing I write about, but it is something, it is something that's very important to me. Um, I think I write about in, in terms of poetry, I write about what moves me. And in terms of short stories, I write about things that um, I think are sort of interesting situations and characters particularly important in story, I think. I don't know if that helps. That, that's very interesting. Would you mind explaining to us the process of writing the poem? Um, it depends on the poem, but I often, often I respond to prompts that are, um, a lot of publications come up with prompts and they say, will you write about such a thing? And they give you a deadline. And I find that very, very useful because if you don't have a deadline, you just sit there and you sort of think, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. But a deadline sort of um, kind of helps. You probably find that with your homework. You wouldn't do it if you didn't have a deadline. It's the same with writing. It really helps. Um, and then sometimes I play around with the words that come to me. Maybe there are certain words um, that um, come to me in, um, regarding the, the topic, or maybe I think of a situation. Sometimes a line will just come to me. It really does depend on the actual poem, the actual situation. Um, sometimes, because I write, I teach creative writing and I set exercises for people in the class and sometimes I will do the exercises myself and I've come up with uh, with some poems like that. Wonderful. What did you What's say? What's your favourite part uh, about blogging? What do I what do I think about blogging? Because uh, sorry the sound went a bit there. Um, what do I think no about blogging? Um, yes okay I've been blogging for over 10 years now and I started um, when I started, a lot of people were blogging. I think people have moved to Instagram much more now. Um, and Twitter, of course, has become much more popular than it was when I first started blogging, if in fact Twitter was around then. I think blogging is a really good way of spreading ideas and sharing ideas. Um, I blog about my writing. I blog about crafts. I blog about um, wildlife a lot because I, I share a lot of photos. Um, and I think it's a really interesting way of making connections. Um, I've met in, in sort of not necessarily in real life, but I've met a lot of people online who are very interesting and I met them through their blogs. Um, and it's just a very good way of, of sharing things and spreading a message if you want to spread a message. Wow, that's brilliant. On your blog, Crafty Green Poet, we have seen that you survey the wildlife in your area and share pictures. What aspect of wildlife do you love the most? Ah, that's a very difficult one. I, I started as a bird watcher. I've been watching birds since I was nine. So in some ways I would say definitely birds. But when I was at university, I studied botany. Um, so I would say plants, 
but more recently I've got really interested in insects, particularly hoverflies, which are the, the small insects that mimic um, bees and wasps and other more dangerous um, um, insects. And hoverflies are absolutely fascinating. So I would say I have various interests in nature, but those are my main ones. But I'm always, one of the things I love about nature is there's always something else to learn. Um, so, you know, maybe it will be beetles next. And there are a lot of beetles. <laughs> That's Thank you. So interesting. We got to study your poem, The Lost Dance of the Cranes, this year in school. So what was the idea behind this poem? That's brilliant. Have you ever experienced a uh, writer's block? Um, yes, I have experienced writer's block. I think the best thing to do is to write about something else um, because very often a writer's block is a very specific thing. Um, like you don't want to, you've been asked to write a poem about something and it's just not happening or you're trying to work on um, say a short story and you don't know what to write next and so it's very good sometimes to just go and write something else or to do something else entirely like go for a walk um so i just think do something else and don't worry about the writer's block and then come back to that piece of work and then it should be easier coming back to it sometimes you need to put it away for quite a long time and then go back to it um, but make sure that you're writing something else. I don't think there's such a thing as writer's block in a general sense. I think it's a very specific thing about a particular piece of thing that you're writing. That's very interesting and I'm sure it'll help out a lot of aspiring writers. So we recently learned that you make crafts out of recycled materials. So yes, uh -huh. what, what exactly do you make them out of and what is the end result usually? Um, right, I mostly make jewellery, although I also make things like curtain tiebacks. Actually, just a second. Um, I don't know if you can see this because I can't see myself on the screen, but this is a curtain tieback that I've made just most recently. I'm going to make another one to match it. And what I do is I go to secondhand shops. There are a lot of secondhand shops in Edinburgh where I live. And they sell, some of them sell bags of broken and unsellable jewellery. So I buy those bags and I take things apart um, and I make them into new things. And then I sell them on my Etsy shop. Um, sometimes I also use other found items. Um, occasionally you find things in the street. Um, although obviously in the days of COVID, you're not really going to pick things up as much as you would um, pre-pandemic. Um, but bo basically things that I find, I also sew quite a lot. I have um, some fabric that um, quite a lot of friends have given me fabric that they don't use and scrap fabric. And I make things with them um, with that. And that's something I like doing. I particularly like making gift bags, um, small little bags to put my jewellery in when I sell it. So anything else you want to know about my jewellery or anything? Um, so are you currently working on any books or poems? Um, I'm always writing poetry. Um, I'm not actually working on a book at the moment. Um, I've written quite a lot of short stories. Um, my most recent publication was actually a short story in um, which was included in an anthology. Um, at the moment, mostly I'm writing, on, um, writing poems. I'm always writing haiku. Um, the short form Japanese poems because um, they're very easy to write and they're very, um, very much inspired by nature. So I often, when I'm out and about, I'll often be inspired to write a haiku. Um, and um, I mean, one day, hopefully, 
maybe not not um, too far into the future, I'll have another um, poetry book ready, but not yet. Just individual poems at the moment. That's amazing. Um, like, oh, what's your favorite part in making jewelry? Favorite part in making jewelry is actually the design. I like putting things together. I like sort of trying to find the colors that match and the maybe unlikely things that you wouldn't think would go together. And sort of, I like to sit there with, with beads in front of me and pick them out and see what would go together. Um, I like the whole process actually, except some parts of making jewelry are very, very fiddly when you're sort of doing the fasteners, um, putting the fasteners together. Um, for jewellery, that can be very fiddly. So that's my least favourite bit. But the design is my favourite bit. That's really nice. In your poetry pamphlet, Bougainvillea Dancing, you've written several poems related to Africa. So have you yes. ever been to Africa? And if so, what did you enjoy seeing the most over there? I lived in Malawi for two years. Um, I was teaching biology, chemistry, physics when I was there and I was running the school wildlife club. So that's why um, so many of those poems are about Malawi. I also traveled in Zimbabwe and Botswana while I was there. And what I love about Africa is, is the wildlife. Um, and also in Malawi, people are really, really friendly. It's a lovely, friendly country. It's a very poor country. Um, as you might know at the moment, it's been hit by a cyclone very recently. So it's another natural disaster has just hit Malawi. Um, but it is, it is a beautiful, friendly country and with lots of, of wonderful wildlife. And I did really enjoy two years there. Um, I enjoyed the job and I enjoyed traveling around the country. So you earlier mentioned about writer's block. So do you have any first-hand stories that you could mention to us? About, about writer's block? Um, well, I have, I have sometimes been, I mean, not, I don't know about specifics, but there's definitely been times when I've been writing um, um, uh, poems that, um, Oh, I actually, I, I can think of a very specific one where I overcame writer's block when I was writing a story um, about one of my experiences in Malawi and one of the characters, I just couldn't think of where the story was going to go, but one of the characters actually, um, one, because it was based on real life and one of the characters in the story who was a real person, so it was based on real experience, but she reminded me of somebody who at the time of writing the story, which was many years later, um, she, reminded, she reminded me of somebody I was then working with who was a union activist. So I thought, what will this would this union activist do if she were in the situation I was writing about? And so this, this other person took over from the character and that's, that's how I managed to finish the story because the union activist took over and basically told me what to do in the story, which was really interesting. So um, the story was actually obviously fiction, but it was based on a real experience. Um, and I, I thought that was quite a useful way of, of dealing with writer's block in that specific situation. So sometimes characters remind you of somebody else and maybe just mix and match your characters can really help with writer's block if that's what you do, if that's what you're stuck with. Yes, thank you. Um, um, I think what would be your I think it's really the important that in the current climate and biodiversity crises that we have people who are writing about wildlife and about the climate crisis, but also to bear in mind that if you are writing about the climate crisis, you want to be offering positive solutions, not just showing how bad things are. I think that's one of the advantages of science fiction. Um, there's a lot of science fiction is futuristic and people are more likely to sort of read the story and get engrossed in the story if it's science fiction in some ways because they don't see it as necessarily um, something awful that's happening now. But because you're projecting it like that, you get really absorbed and enthralled by the science fiction and then that can give you a different way of looking at the current perspective. Um, but it is really important that, that, that people are addressing the current situation. But if you're shouting too loudly and you are being too caught up in, in political points, then people are maybe 
turned off the situation and they say, oh, you're just shouting you're, and we're not going to listen. So you have to be a bit more creative about it. Don't just say, you know, this is all horrible, but try and find the solutions. I think that's what we really need. And writers can be a part of that as much as scientists. We need scientists, but we need artists, writers and also visual artists. There are some very good visual artists who are addressing the climate crisis and biodiversity crisis in imaginative ways. And we need everyone to use as many creative skills as they have. Um, and if you don't, if you, you know, you might be a scientist, you might be a creative person you might just like wildlife um, and you can get involved in citizen science um, so those are all kinds of solutions um, I just think you need to all be aware and try and do your bit but not to feel not to feel guilty if you if you think you're not doing enough because that doesn't help try and be positive Thank you, Ms. Ms. Wilson. Um, so that's all we have for today. We would like to thank you for joining us, Ms. Wilson. Um, would you like to tell everyone where they can find you on social media? So thank you very much for interviewing me. I really enjoyed that. And good luck with your, your schoolwork and best wishes to all of the, the, of you who want to be writers or other creative people. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much. We hope you have a lovely and day ahead. Thank you so much once again. Well, thank you very much. Yes, it's been lovely meeting you and talking to you. Okay.